is a tough, hard-nosed businessman, but fair. He's not afraid to say yes, let's go for it. When you see something he wants, he goes and he gets it, and he outworks everybody to get it. He has a really good instinct when to press for more and a really good instinct when to just cut the deal. Tillman does not sit still. He doesn't get complacent. Always saying, I'm going to slow down. Every time he slows down, everybody needs to put on their seatbelt because that means he's about to take off again. He wants everything he touches to perform to the best of their potential. It's really hard to do what he's done to start with very little and build an empire like he has. All right, no copying that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tillman Fertitta, and uh, I do a lot of things. It's Tillman Fertitta. He is the CEO of Landry's. Landry's, the largest privately held restaurant company in the country. Landry's has been on a buying binge over the past few months, scooping up 72 claim jumpers. He just bought more than steak hats. He got Bubba Gump. They seem to suggest that you've done this almost Texas-style guns a-blazing. Meet Tillman Fertitta. The restaurant mogul from Texas whose empire consists of over 500 restaurants, six casinos, 12 hotels, four aquariums, two amusement parks, and now the owner of the Houston Rockets. Not everybody gets to own an NBA franchise. With a net worth of $3.6 billion, Tillman has been identified as the richest restaurateur in the world by Forbes magazine. Tillman, to say that you are a businessman is an understatement. You're a guy with 60,000 employees. Tillman Fertitta. Tillman Fertitta. Tillman Fertitta. You know, it's kind of weird. Other kids growing up, you know, read comics and watch cartoons. And even when I was young, I used to carry around my my grandfather's briefcase and say, I've got my business in here. So. Uh, I, I was always into business. Don't ask me to sing a tune. Don't ask me to play an instrument. I have no talent whatsoever. But if you want to talk business, we're here to talk business. Let's get back to business. So, uh, y'all, I mean, y'all got to just be thrilled with sales. Right. I mean, it's, uh, it, I, I know I am, and, and we all know this, okay? We can, we can have the best margins, but if we don't have sales, we're going out of business. And, and y'all are totally going in the right direction. We're already past our original goal. Um, now we're shooting for 3.8 million. Oh and we're God. gonna hit it at $155 per store per day to the end of the year, which is easy money for us. And what did it use to be? 2.5 overall. Tillman uh, has a lot of business philosophies. And one of his philosophies is change, change, change. And an organization that's not changing with the times is an organization that's dying. Nobody preaches change, change, change more than me, but you have to change the right things. And, and the one thing you never do is, is change something that's very successful. And there you had a $10 million restaurant. Yeah. So why would you go in there, and this was working, and totally change it. I know. You know, now we're having all those different varieties and people could come there and say, you know what, I'm not just gonna have crap, I'm gonna have something different, I'm gonna have a, a mixture of food, I'm gonna get a different sample and a different idea. I think that really changed the mindset of someone going to a Joe's Crab Shack. You gotta have all the different varieties. Uh, if you're Joe's Crab Shack, you're never gonna change that. Yeah. We do want to sell more shrimp yeah. though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. My dad had a restaurant in Galveston and I learned how to pill shrimp at 10 years old, but also learned how to seat people, and I learned how to buy fish at the back door, and I learned how to scale a fish and fillet a fish. And uh, at 12 years old, I told my dad, you just need to go home and let me handle this business. The weakest thing you can be is not to react quick enough when you know you don't have the right person. We've replaced three GMs. We've got uh, replacing three more uh, front managers and the three GMs I'm bringing on are very talented at a much higher level. We all know that the GM is the most important, and I'm just going to say this anyway, it's the most important position in this company, okay? If we had all great GMs, we could have, we could eliminate this room, okay? <laughs> <laughs> There's Bruno. 
Okay. Is, right. is Marquise There's here? There's Vince. Is, is Marquise here? Marquise supposed to be here today. Yeah. My occupation is general manager of the Houston Rockets. I think it's intentionally vague on purpose. Basically, anytime something goes wrong, I get blamed, and anytime something goes uh, right, then we have to, everyone gets the credit. So, hey, it's his idea. <laughs> My job is actually decision making. Uh, getting the right players here is obviously the most important thing we do, but obviously bringing in the right coaching staff and setting the right culture, and ultimately all trying to win a championship. We've had a fantastic last year in that uh, Tillman Fertitta came in as a new owner. We had a record number of wins. We had the deepest playoff run we've had you know, since the championship years, and uh, we're set up to do it again next year. So uh, the energy that Tillman's brought in terms of his experience in the entertainment industry, frankly, his high-end lifestyle really fits with our players and allows him to relate to our players, which really helps us with recruiting. You know, and he's just a really good owner. I mean, he's it's really hard to do what he's done to start Start with uh, very little and build an empire like he has up to six billion such that you can buy the Houston Rockets. Business is business and, and that is a business over there. And it's a business from the right trades to, to making the right deals with the players to the right deals with management and, and to selling your sport to the city. And you're competing for the entertainment dollar just like any other business out there. It's been a great development for the organization. It's brought a it's brought a new vibe and it's brought a new energy that everybody has really grasped onto. And I can't put a qualifier on it as far as what kind of impact it had on our season last year, but I do believe that there's a correlation between his new energy and his new vibe and what he's kind of brought, the excitement that he and his family have brought to the team and us having the best regular season we've ever had. This is our test kitchen. We create the new food for all the concepts. Um, all of the concepts have um, executive chefs and they come in here quarterly and show us the, the, the ideas that they have for new promotion items and, and what have you for their menus. And um, then we do formal tastings in here and I tweak and fix and make sure everything's, you know, the way we need it to be. Hi everybody, Captain's on deck. So we're trying to decide what pieces to use for in the Lexus Lounge. Um, since we're, these are all inducted, so I don't know if there's a particular look that you like. You can see the different finish up. That one, I know it's going to be dark in here. So maybe. Everything starts at the top. It starts with Tillman, and Tillman does not sit still. He doesn't get complacent, and, and he travels a lot, and he stays on top of, of foods and trends and people and their likes. I mean, it's not just in the food. It's in the decor. It's in everything we do. So it, it starts with Tillman um, because he's so motivated and interested. It keeps all of us doing that, too. And it's still the verbiage that you use on the menu, too. you got to have that new verbiage. Buzzwords. you got to have buzzwords. Yeah. It's been fantastic working with the Rockets last year. So they, they have their own private chef and we work very closely with him. We also do now all of the uh, airline catering for them out of Houston and in whatever city they're in. We do their post game food because we have restaurants in every city that we play in except for one. It's been really fun and, and they told me that things were amazing and they you know it's been a real good fit for all of us I mean I'm certain that the food is part of the reason they went to the playoffs last year sure about that what's really interesting is you know people probably think like the Houston Astros that the name Rockets was named because they were in Houston Texas well I remember being in junior high school and they were the San Diego Rockets and they were moving to Houston the next year. And we didn't have a basketball team, but yet I had become a basketball fan. You had Elvin Hayes, the greatest game ever, UCLA and University of Houston. That's what really brought college basketball to the next level. Well, Elvin Hayes, who was the University of Houston All-American and ended up being a Hall of Famer from pro basketball, he was the star player for the San Diego Rockets. And so the following year, 
they, San Diego Rockets moved to Houston, Texas, and they were our hometown team with our hometown hero. They were named the Rockets, so you just, it, it just fit with Houston, with NASA. And so they were just always a favorite team of mine. The Rockets and our history with them has been a happy, a happy time from the beginning. Tillman and I met at Broncos Country and Western Club. I met Paige uh, uh, during the Urban Cowboy days when John Travolta was teaching us all that we better learn the Country Western dance. He acted like he was interested in my girlfriend that I was with and so he could call me the next day to ask about her. <laughs> uh, one thing about all of us guys, we, we know every trick in the book when we're chasing down a woman, and uh, I thought that was a really good line, okay? And, and uh, you guys ought to pick up from that watching me. We dated in the 80s, and um, we were going to Oiler games, Rocket games. We went to Rocket games a lot. I can remember one season out of the 42 home games, I think we went to 38 or 39. Uh, it, it, was a, it was a lot of fun and uh, it, was, it was some great times. I don't like that beloved leg. Did you see? I don't know if you wanted to talk about that. Not, we're not the first in Houston, we're the only one in Houston because other ones have, have, have received it before and lost it. So is pleased to announce that we're the only five. I don't want to say I'm confident. This is, that's kind of cocky. I know, but I don't want to. The development business fell apart in the, in the early 80s, and I was an investor, just a small dollars with a bunch of guys. And uh, in 86, when the world fell apart, uh, they were all arguing. And I said, I'll just buy you guys out. And so I had the one Landry's and the one Willie G's. and. Uh, Basically between 86 and 93, I built a couple of restaurants a year and in 93, restaurant concepts were really hot in America. Casual dining was extremely hot and they started doing IPOs with these consumer companies and I said, gosh, I'm, I'm doing 30 million a year and making 3 million a year with this company and uh, let me see if I can take it public. Even when he's had huge obstacles, he keeps, just keeps going after it. Just when you think it would wear him down or wear him out or all options have been, he just pushes harder. You will never be a great entrepreneur if you have fear. And, and uh, that's the one thing that you better get out of your system and your blood. Uh, I never had fear. I can remember when I had five restaurants and I'm, you know, late 20s and I'm making $2 million a year and my dad saying, gosh, why don't you just slow down? I mean, you're making more money than you ever thought you would make in your life, more money than I ever made and thought about making in one year. Why do you want to just keep going? And uh, it was good advice probably for most people because a lot of people do have some early success and, and then fail, but uh, to me it was just a beginning. And uh, I've kept the foot on the pedal here for uh, quite a few years. Ever since Yao Ming, uh, the Chinese people and the government and everybody else there has been a huge supporter of the Houston Rockets. And I don't think it hurts that our color is that bright red. If you go to China and you're over there in business and the Houston Rockets are playing, it's gonna be very easy to find the Houston Rockets on TV there. It's a great relationship and it makes me very proud that we're the most popular team in China. Now, interesting story, a long time ago, 1994, the first NBA basketball game seen live in China was the Houston Rockets against the New York Knicks. Hakeem Olajuwon, at that time was the center for the Houston Rockets. Yao Ming, you know, was in China at the time. And then you fast forward to the time when Yao Ming then kind of picked up the mantle and became the number one pick for the Rockets. It all has this serendipitous kind of timeline that has worked throughout the, throughout the years that, you know, we started off being the first team seen there. Then we brought in Yao Ming as the first number one overall pick from China and he's become an icon and a legend and a Hall of Famer 
uh, that is going to you know continue to be a part of our team for uh, for eternity. It, it, it's really kind of interesting. In 1993, and if it would have been in 1994, I would have probably been in a much better position to buy the team because all of a sudden the, I, I was worth a lot more money. But uh, I, I had a partner, and we went in to buy the team together, and we ended up getting outbid by just a few million dollars and uh, really never got a second chance to, to, to really figure out what to do and, and uh, you know, lost the team at $80 million in, uh, 25 years ago. I think it's a better investment today even than it was back then. Two point uh, two billion, by the way. He he doesn't want you to short him the two hundred million. But you know, there's the positive and the negative. Sure, I could have bought it for eighty million dollars instead of paying two point two billion twenty five years later. But you know what? Maybe I would have not done anything else but ran that basketball team for the next twenty five years, and now I have this monstrous company and I didn't have to sell any of it to own the Houston Rockets today. So you know what? Everything happens at the right time and I think it all worked out so I will never look back. It's very rare for an owner to be kind of the lead fan, right, in your local market. And that's one thing that I think Tillman and his family kind of kind of looked at they sat down one night as a family and they had a conversation about if you were going to spend over two billion dollars on anything in the world as a family would there be anything else that you wanted and to a person around the table they said the houston rockets are the one thing that we could see being in our family for the next hundred years the rockets came along at a great time in tillman's life in our family life in our kids lives and so to get it, it was a family joy. Everybody was part of it. And for Tillman, to get to share it with the kids, it's the icing on top. I understand the play on the red. Yeah, it's the, yeah, rockets, yeah, it's the rockets and the right. Cougars. Could Maybe just H-Town Red. Maybe drop the strong. H-Town Red strong, it just doesn't flow. H-Town Red. How about yeah. H-Town Strong? So our day, it's different every day. We come to the office and there's always a different type of meeting going on over a different project. It could be involve a player trade on the Rockets. It can involve uh, what's going on in the menu at Mastro's now. And just every day is a new adventure, really. And it's fun, but some days you don't know what you're walking into and that's the scary part. But why not do it together? Everybody that's knows my sure. connection. No, that's fine. You can leave that the way it so is. So what I was going to do is do a shirt giveaway at at a Cougar game and do a shirt of, like the first Cougar at game the Rockets. and at the Rockets and then, and then all of a sudden you have 20,000 of these shirts floating around and everybody's going to want these. My dad is bold, he is confident and he is as energetic and as passionate about his family, his business and the ones he cares about as, as anyone as I have ever met. Call her at home tonight and let's do it. I think you know, do it in the morning. You do it early in the morning. Correct. Yeah, 9 a.m. No, originally I was just going to do this, and then it worked out that they would take it to the showroom. showroom. It was going to be both. Right. But I just said, God, people having cocktails around. I mean, you saw it the other night at that wedding. Th think about the glamour of that wedding. Right. You know, that they're sitting there having cocktails out there. I mean, you got to admit, you thought you were at this super ritzy, ritzy wedding, and it was really the yeah, background that made anything it. Anything at that hotel is going to feel super ritzy. You know, the greatest thing for a parent is to, to see their children be successful. And I don't care that it's being a billionaire or a star athlete, but you might be the best teacher. We're all good at something. And the people that don't find what they're good at or not good at, they're the ones that had an unsuccessful life. A lot of times in companies and organizations, people who work, they always think about an exit plan. Uh, there's no exit plan for, for, for Tita Entertainment, for Landry's, and for the Golden Nugget. It's about being opportunistic, strengthening our brand, uh, making the company as healthy and as unique and dynamic and as strong as possible. We are learning something new about something different every day. You, I never, you never want to stop learning, and that's what we're doing right now. As my, like my brother said, everything from casinos to restaurants to basketball operations, it's just a, you just got to learn about it all. You want to 
keep growing your company and I'm not in a race anymore, okay? If somebody would have asked me uh, 13 months ago, not 12 months ago, what's the one thing that you feel like you never accomplished in your life? And I would have said, I've had a wonderful life, but I never got to own a professional sports team. And even better than that, there's very few owners that ever get the opportunity to own one in their hometown. And so this was just a great opportunity and a, a great fulfillment to my life.